This is such a rare injury that we may never see it on a basketball court again. But what might be even more shocking is there are case reports of this happening when people put in contact lenses spontaneously. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world sports. In a 2017 National Basketball League game, Akil Mitchell suffered an eye injury that left many people asking how in the world something like this was even possible. Well in this video I'll explain to you how this happened and why there are even case reports of it happening spontaneously or even volitionally. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that thumbs up button if you learned something here and let's get started. This was the play where we can see Mitchell here in blue underneath the basket trying to get this rebound when he gets accidentally poked in the eye. It looks like it's kind of right here on that last final jump where the other team just accidentally hits him in the eye and we can see Mitchell go down to the ground immediately concerned about what had happened. As he rolled over, the cameras caught this image where it appeared that his eyeball had basically popped out. This is something known as a globe subluxation. Globe meaning eyeball and the subluxation implying the act of coming forward kind of out of its normal position. These can of course occur with trauma, but there's also case reports of them happening volitionally when someone basically chooses to do it and even spontaneously with something as simple as putting in a contact lens. We'll talk about the eye anatomy and why this can happen spontaneously, but first I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Policy Genius, an insurance marketplace that's gonna help make getting life insurance simpler and more affordable. If you have family members who depend on your income, you need life insurance, it's that simple. But the process can be complicated and unfortunately we're not taught how to navigate it in high school or college. Policy Genius is here to make that simple by providing personalized quotes from top life insurance companies in a matter of minutes. And the best part is you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Use the link in the description to visit policygenius.com slash MD to shop the market and start saving today. It's a straightforward process that's gonna guide you through a series of questions to make sure it's getting the right quote for you. And if you have any questions, you can get advice from unbiased Policy Genius experts. Their team is gonna handle all the paperwork, the negotiations, and really make this as low stress of a process as possible. So again, head to policygenius.com slash briansuitermd to shop the market and start saving today. You could save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. Look, we never know when something unexpected is gonna happen, and a life insurance policy is one of the best ways that you can help ensure financial stability for the family that depends on you. And there's no time better than the present to do this. So thank you again to Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back to our learning. What I've done with our biodigital anatomy tool is highlight the relevant eye anatomy that applies to this type of an injury. I've essentially removed all the skull here, and so looking in the front, we of course have our skin, we have the globe or the eyeball itself, but then if we turn around to see what's behind, we can see all of these different muscles that are key for controlling our extraocular movements. We have to be able to look to all directions, up and down, and even rotate the eye. And so all these different muscles that sit in that orbital cavity are instrumental in controlling the positions of the eyeball. These muscles are controlled by the cranial nerves that originate from our brain. These are the muscles that we worry about getting pinched or injured when someone has an orbital floor fracture because of their close proximity to those bones. Now, of course, with a major trauma, it's not hard to understand how the eyeball can basically pop forward out of the socket. But the key muscle to understand for why this can happen spontaneously is one called the orbicularis oculi. It's basically this big flat muscle that surrounds our eye and is instrumental in closing our eyelid. This is that muscle sitting on the front side of the skull, and so you can see how it basically comes in front of the eyeball. Whenever there's any insult or irritation to the eye, we have this built-in reflex that triggers us to blink. When we blink, we allow our tears to help lubricate and keep our eyes healthy. And so if something stimulates or irritates the eyeball, we reflexively blink and contract that orbicularis oculi muscle. But in the case of these spontaneous globe subluxations, sometimes when that orbicularis oculi muscle contracts, it basically contracts up behind the eyeball and gets stuck back behind the eyeball. In the case reports where this happens to people who put in contact lenses, it's essentially thought that the act of spreading the eyelids wide open in part pushes that muscle further back. Then if you get any sort of irritation or kind of dryness of the eye, you trigger that blink reflex, but then as the muscle contracts, it's displaced behind the eyeball and so it gets stuck behind the eyeball and causes the eye to sublux forward. There's another case report about this where a patient said that he had been laughing hard, accidentally brushed his right eyelid with his open hand, and subsequently experienced excruciating eye pain. So in that case, some of the pressure that can build up behind the eye combined with touching the eyeball triggers that dry eye blink reflex, 
the eyeball comes forward, and then the lid gets stuck essentially back behind the eye. There are a number of medical conditions where you have something called proptosis, which is when the eyeball basically is more protruded than normal. And sometimes people can volitionally control pushing the eyeball back out. In the case of Mitchell, what probably happened is that finger poking him in the eye induced a little bit of pressure, but then also caused that blink reflex when the eyelid was in a compromised position to make it easier to get stuck back behind the eyeball. Now, thankfully, Mitchell's vision was just fine. He even joked with this tweet that he sent out shortly after the incident occurred. He basically said that once he got in the ambulance, they gave him a little bit of pain medicine, some saline drops, and then he naturally felt the eye slide back into place. One of the ways doctors will manage this is by putting some numbing medicine or eye drops on the eyeball, which helps to break that dry eye blink reflex and allow that muscle to relax to then facilitate getting the eyeball back in place. There are some other maneuvers they can do to try to facilitate it, but in this case, they were able to get it back in just with the eye drops. The last thing I wanna mention is that in sports medicine, we do talk specifically about how to manage a functionally one-eyed athlete. A functionally one-eyed athlete is anybody whose best corrected vision in their affected eye is worse than 2040. We then classify each sport based on potential risk to the eye, which guides what type of protective eyewear the athlete needs to wear. Now, if all this has scared you enough, don't be worried because this is like a rare case report type of thing. Just because there's reports of it happening doesn't mean it's gonna happen to you when you put your contact lenses in. Just know that if it for some reason does happen, you're not the first person and doctors know how to help treat this. Just make sure you seek medical attention as quick as possible and try to put something protective over the eye so that it doesn't get pushed on or suffer any additional injury. On the court, I'm probably gonna be trying to put something like a plastic cup over the entire eye socket to protect that eye while I can then get them back somewhere to get the optimal treatment. So that's it for the video, everybody. I hope this was educational and you learned a little bit about our eye anatomy and how in the world something like this actually can occur. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.